Good morning, guys. Everyone. Uh, Good morning. All right, that's better. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone had a great weekend. We've got a good group here. LJ, Nina, Robert, Janet, Justin. Um, LJ just, just joined us, so he may not be familiar with all you know, the people. So, um, all right, let's, uh, let's rock and roll, Amber, please. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome back to Philosopher's Notes TV. Today we've got another great book, The New Common Denominator of Success by Albert E.N. Gray. The Common Denominator of Success. Now this barely qualifies as a book. It's a little pamphlet. My uh, Philosopher's Note is nearly as long as this little guy. 1940, Albert E.N. Gray, Prudential Insurance Guy, gave a speech that has become very, very, very popular. You can find it online for free. Just search Common Denominator of Success. Pick, that up for, pick this copy up for a couple bucks on Amazon if you want a uh, physical version of it like this. Um, I hesitate to do a episode and a note on it because it's so short, but I've gotten some great feedback on another tiny little book, which was also a speech, um, James Stockdale's Courage Under Pressure. And then we have As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, The Science of Getting Rich, The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles, all of which are short and packed with wisdom. So I decided to jump in. Here we are. We've got a philosopher's note, a uh, bunch of big ideas. Let's define the common denominator of success. So what is the common denominator of success? Albert E. N. Gray tells us, that the common denominator of success, what successful people do, is they have made a habit of doing the things that failures don't like to do. They've made a habit of doing the things that failures don't like to do. That's the common denominator of success. It's very, very simple. Uh, and it was funny because as I was writing this this morning, I got up super early, like crazy early, even by my standards, a few hours earlier for whatever reason. And if you know me, I like eight hours of sleep, optimal sleep 101, my number one self-care habit, but couldn't go back to sleep, so just hopped out of bed. We're talking like 2.30 or so. I'm like, whatever, all right, we'll make this a good day, no big deal. Meditated, did my five minutes of movement, then I showed up to do my writing. And I was feeling considerably less inspired and enthusiastic than I usually do when I sit down to work in the morning. And the best part was, is that I, I could observe that and say, that's nice. Okay, now what needs to get done? David Reynolds' constructive living style. It's a Wednesday morning. I'm recording this on a Wednesday. And I write AM1 deep work time block, which is the time after I wake up, before the family wakes up. I create a philosopher's note, a PDF, first thing in the morning. This is what I do, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if I'm not teaching on a Monday. I don't need to think about it, right? Scott Adams style, I'm not wasting a brain cell thinking about what I'm going to do. And whether I feel like it or not, it has nothing to do with whether I do it or not. And it's fascinating because the old me would have checked in and said, oh, you're tired, you know, you just take, take today off. It's not a big deal. And I would have gone online and done whatever, right? Now, the new me, I've created so many bright lines of what I'm going to do and commitments to what I'm going to do. And I've created standards that I just need to perform. There's really no negotiation, no option here. And I started working, well, actually, I reflected on that. And that mere ability to notice how I was feeling and to say, that doesn't matter. Now I'm going to do what needs to get done, felt so good. It's what David Reynolds talks about. He says, there's no better feeling in the world than to not feel like doing something and be able to get yourself to do it, <laughs> right? What is feeling like it have to do with it? What needs to get done? Go do that. So that's the, the basic idea of the common denominator of success. We want to get to a point where we make a habit of doing things that the older versions of ourselves, right, uh, and, and people who don't achieve a high level of success don't make a habit of doing. So look into your life and think about all the things that you don't like doing and see if you can reorient your relationship to it and realize that a lot of people don't like doing a lot of things, successful people, but they do them anyway. And why? Because they're more focused on the results than they are the methods. So he has a great line, old school style, right? He says that successful people are more concerned with pleasing results than with pleasing methods. In our last episode on the confidence gap, we talked about 
the fact Russ Harris tells us modern day mindfulness meets uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, right? Acceptance and commitment training. He tells us, look, you have two options in life. You can live the rest of your life, option number one, where you take action toward your goals when you feel like it. When you're feeling good, you're feeling psyched up, you're inspired, life is good, you do what you feel inspired to do, right? But if you're not, then you just don't do it and you wait until you feel inspired. And he says, good luck with that because you're going to be waiting a lot, of the, a, lot of, a lot of the time for a long time and you may never get anything done. Or option two, you have clarity on what you want to do, which is what we're going to talk about in the next big idea. And then you do what needs to get done, whether you feel like it or not. That has nothing to do with it. You are more interested in pleasing results in the outcomes you're going to create with your behaviors than you are in feeling like it all the time common denominator of success, making a habit of doing what needs to get done whether you feel like it or not. Now, how do you do that? Albert tells us that the way that successful people get themselves to do this is they have a very strong purpose. Their purpose is their engine. They've activated themselves with a purpose that really fires them up and they're willing to put all their energy into it and then they're willing to burn through the inevitable challenges and not feeling like it days that arise, right? We talk about activation energy all the time. Water doesn't boil at 200 degrees or 210, it boils at 212 degrees. Rub sticks together, nothing happens till 451 degrees. You need to have a purpose that fires you up. When you have a purpose that fires you up, it will burn through the obstacles that get in the way of people who don't have uh, the same type of purpose and fire. This is our motivation equation, right? Motivation equals expectancy times value over impulsivity times delay. You need to have a goal you really value and that you expect to be able to achieve if you want to have high motivation. If you don't, you're going to have low motivation, which means that this is the emphasis, your impulsivity. What is impulsivity? Impulsivity is doing what you feel like doing because it feels good. I just created a, a film to class on Willpower 101 on Monday of this week. And I talk about a research study that uh, Walter Mischel talks about in The Marshmallow Test. Fascinating stuff, won't go into the details, right? It's bringing kids into the lab, right? You can get one marshmallow now or two marshmallows if you wait. That predicted their overall well-being, their ability to delay gratification in that 20-minute exercise predicted things in their lives decades later. It's crazy and it's totally teachable how to get better at it, which are all the things that we talk about here. Anyway, he has a study in there he talks about where you can slide someone into the fMRI machine, right? And you can ask them, hey, think about yourself. Okay, cool. You got it. It lights up a certain part of your brain. Then you say, okay, think about a stranger and it lights up a different part of their brain. Then the part of the study is they ask them, okay, cool. So now, think about your future self. Think about yourself in 10 years. And they look and see what part of their brain lights up. And what's fascinating is the more willpower someone has, the more connection they have to uh, their ability to delay gratification, the deeper the connection they have to their future self. And it maps over in their brain. People who have low willpower, right, low ability to delay gratification, their future self looks more like a stranger than themselves in an fMRI little scan. Whereas those with higher degrees of willpower and ability to delay gratification have a deeper connection. Their future self shows up more like their self than a stranger. It's crazy, right? So the point of that is we need to strengthen our connection to our future selves. And one of the ways to do that is to have a strong purpose. When we have a stronger purpose and a stronger connection to our future self that fires us up, we do the right thing right now. We don't give in to impulses and eat the one marshmallow. We're willing to wait because we want to be nice to our future self because we know, and I know, that me sitting down and doing the work this morning, I was going to feel way better at the end of the day and tomorrow and at the end of the month when I look back on the month if I did what needed to get done, whether I felt like it or not, than if I impulsively said, eh, I'm going to skip today, right? And I already do feel great. I felt great five minutes into it. It's on fire and I've been super productive. You get a lot done between 2.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. before the family gets up or 8 a.m., whatever it was. So anyway, get clear on your purpose. What is your purpose? Can you define it? Can you explain it in a sentence? Do you reflect on it on a daily basis? Does that drive you? Because that's going to be the engine that gets you fired up about these results to ignore 
occasional unpleasant methods. There you go, getting fired up. Uh, the fourth big idea here is that the habits that you create, create your future. So we talked about common denominator, come back to it. Can you recall what it is? Make it stick style. Right now, think about what is the common denominator of success? I've already mentioned it a few times. Can you recall it? And embrace that difficulty. Don't be lazy about it. Be excited about it and say, oh, what was it? Let me think about it. Oh yeah, it was, it was what was it? That active recall is actually the best possible way to make something stick. A la, make it stick, the science of effective learning. So the common denominator of success that we've defined is what? Successful people make a habit of doing things that failures don't like doing. So we need to make that a habit. You have this future self that's pulling you toward it, and you make a habit of doing the right things day in and day out. That's how we create our futures, obviously. And uh, Albert says that you're, you're gonna have habits one way or another. They're either gonna be conscious or they're going to be unconscious, and your life today is simply an aggregation of all of your habits. So if you want a better life in the future, simply start reworking your habits. Habits 101 style. One of my favorite classes we've done so far. If you haven't checked that one out yet, check it out. It's free. Go to brianjohnson.me slash habits and uh, check out the class. My best ideas on how to create habits. For now, think about what your number one habit is that you could start doing now, that you can install into your life right now that would have the most positive impact in your life. What is it? What habit is going to help you fulfill that purpose and these results the most? Is it exercise? Is it nutrition? Is it optimizing your energy in a specific way? Is it getting more sleep? Is it uh, creating consistently in a deep work time block? What is your number one keystone habit? Think about it, reflect on it, and we're gonna talk about what to do about it in the next one. Right? And then on the other side, what's your number one negative habit? What's the thing you're doing these days that's just slowing you down? It's like trying to drive on the freeway with one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brakes, right? You can't go anywhere and you're burning up your, your brakes and it's just not a pretty picture, right? Squealing around, you don't wanna do that. What's the number one negative habit you have that you need to drop? That when you drop it will have the most positive impact on your life. Plus one, minus one. I love coming back to this all the time. I, I do so in the classes because I do so in my life. This is a never ending awesome question to ask. There's always something we could be doing more of and there's always something we could be letting go of. Hopefully, we're spiraling up, right? Where there, there are more powerful additions and less destructive minuses, but there's always room to optimize. So figure that out. Remember that habits equal your future. And then our fifth big idea, is to resolve, do, and create a new world. Here's a great line that I share in the note on the fact that you need to resolve to create a new habit and to do the things that your prior self didn't wanna do. And then you need to do that. You can't just resolve, you need to do it today. And then guess what? Tomorrow, you need to make a new commitment and you need to execute it again. And then the day after that, you need to make a new commitment and you need to execute again. And you do that every single day. Whether you feel like it or not, you make a habit of doing the things you didn't used to like to do, and then what happens? He says, one day, you wake up and you're a different person, and you're in a different world, and you look back at who you used to be, and you can't even remember the things you used to do. It's awesome for me to look back at my life over the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and the things that I used to struggle with, and, and you know the ups and downs, and all the things that I've talked about in these episodes, it's awesome for me to look at it and go, I'm, I'm literally living in a different world now than I was 20 years ago. Not in one snap my fingers, that used to be my biggest issue, is I used to think I could change it immediately. You can't change it immediately. You can't change it in a weekend workshop or one inspiring whatever. It's systematically, incrementally showing up and just getting a little bit better day in and day out, making gains, securing those gains, and then making more gains uh, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and in my case now, decade after decade, and then it gets exciting because you can look back and you can look forward and realize you still haven't done anything yet. What are you really capable of in the next one, two, three, four, five decades? God willing, depending on where we are, maybe more if you're uh, on the younger side, maybe a little less if you're not. Uh, but in any case, know that you need to recommit every single day and make it an infant process, and don't be skipping days, and don't be skipping two days. I talk about that in the note. We talk about it again in Habits 101. 
And in the process, you're going to create a great future. You're going to bring this future to life, this, this great purpose of yours. You're going to be more interested in the results than how you feel. And as a result, you will be living in integrity with the common denominator of success. You will make a habit of doing the things that failures don't like to do. Now, that's exciting. All right. Got all fired up in this one. Hope you enjoyed. What was your favorite big idea? How are you going to make it a bigger part of your life? Get on that and have another awesome day. See ya. All right, some great stuff. Um, again, almost always very familiar themes, um, but it's always about mastery and doing and not, uh, the, the, the knowledge is a great starting point, but without application, nothing, nothing changes, right? There's no progress. So who wants to, uh, who wants to start us off? And uh, all of a sudden I turn around and there's got like 20 more people in the room. <laughs> it cool. makes me think about if we could all look up and someone could magically say, you know, you want to make $2 million in commissions, all you got to do is this, 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 and this. And it's clear the path of how you would get there. But again, we just don't do the actions, even though it, it, it's almost a guaranteed path and a guaranteed result, but we get in our ways too much and we don't constantly stay in the process. Yeah, and it's how, it's what you just said is exactly how we start out. It's a willingness to do what others just won't, right? And it's it's so easy to separate yourself, but yet so many, most people just do not, right? And it comes back to, again, I come back to always clarity of purpose. Like, what is your purpose? Is it something bigger than you? And that clarity creates confidence. It creates consistency. It creates accountability. It gets you to do what you know you need to do. And we all know what we need to do for the most part. And we just don't necessarily do it, right? Because we are not purely committed to that purpose. And with that commitment, again, it creates that clarity. And then you do it regardless of how you feel. Your actions drive um, your, your purpose drives your actions, not how you feel. Uh, I, I see it all the time. I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it. Or it's someone else's fault. I don't take personal responsibility for it. Or, or, or even the reverse. You go to a seminar, you get all psyched up, you get inspired. And then a few days later, you're not doing anything. And that's why these certain seminars you go to have no results because you're not in the action. You have to do the action when you're not inspired. Yep. It's kind of the reverse. And most of the time, most people aren't inspired, so they're not in action. And it's, it's as you said, don't be a walking library, be a body library. So do take the actions. And again, going back to Angela Duckworth and Rip, her study showed it's two thirds effort. It's one third knowing what to do, but two thirds just the effort, get in the movement. Yep. Great the habit of action, guys. I mean, that that's at the end of the day what, what counts most, right? An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. And I think when he asks, like, what's your keystone habit? And I've seen this before. And I think about it, and I think about my first thing is working out. That is like, like I work out every single day, you know, and I don't feel like it. I don't wake up. All, and, but once I get into motion, it just, everything starts to open up. And I feel better about overcoming that challenge and it starts to get me in motion, right? So I think, you know, what does that look like for you? Because we are defined by our habits, pure and simple. That's good or bad. The beauty of is it, beauty of that is though that they can change if you're not happy with what they look like, right? So don't don't get, you know, don't beat yourself up over, but what are you going to do about it? Right. It always comes back to action, right? And when you create, I, I, I emphasize again and again and again a purpose bigger than you whether you're on a team, whether it's your family, whether it's some combination of other things, then when you don't feel like it, you're far more likely to do it because you don't want to let other people down that you've committed to. If it's just about yourself, it's very easy to like, hey, I'll give myself a break. I'm not going to do it today, right? So like, I just look at myself in my own world. That's my frame of reference. Like I've got all of you guys. I've got a lot of big world. I do not want to let people down. I've got a responsibility to them. So when I don't feel like it, I quickly say, you know, like I can't let those people down. That all these lives are like, you know, not that they're hanging in the balance, but they they depend upon that. I don't take that lightly. And I've worked way too hard to build that trust and credibility. And I don't want to jeopardize that. So create that in your world, guys, because then when you don't feel like it, it's non-negotiable, you're going to do it regardless. That's the difference. Accountability and a purpose bigger than you. To recommit every day, just refocus whatever you're doing. I didn't get myself. You might have been great the first day, but recommit tomorrow 
and then recommit the next day, recommit. And, and so yeah. I, I think it's getting at the psychology of it because it's not easy. All of us, we could do a, a few days, maybe even a smaller group, get seven days in a row. But who's committing on day eight? Who's committing two weeks from now? Yeah. Who's recommitting? And, and it, it's a conscious spot to try to get that habit going. Not easy. I think, what is it, 90 days or plus to create new habits? It's consistency. And it comes back to, again, that, that purpose that you're truly, truly real commitment, right? And, and, and I would say if we track somebody that was recommitting every day, six months from now, the, the volume is just heading up. Yep. The results are there. Who else? Because I can go on on all these points for, for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I can say a few things about it. Um, and you said some great stuff, man, definitely. And, you know, you find out who you are as a person when you actually get into motion. Sometimes people think it's the other way around. You're interested in somebody and you go forward into that. But uh, you're really just committing to it. You find out if it is for you in the habits and the consistent actions. And think about, you know, people are challenged a lot by prospecting. And it, it's not just that it's a great idea to contact people in the morning because it's more likely to reach them. But it's also, if you are challenged by that, doing it in the beginning of the day, not putting it off to some other time of the day where you could have an excuse of why you're not doing it becomes really powerful and can become a really good habit too. And uh, another thing I thought of is, you know, as we can't see the finish line, we can't see the road ahead so clearly sometimes, but you know, from people that have been there before, people that are, that are consistently successful, and if, you know, if I were to tell you, hey, you know, if you do X amount of activities on a daily basis, we're going to have a conversation again in December 31st, and you're going to say, wow, I just made 500K in, in uh, GCI, but you can't see it now because you're at the beginning. Would you still do it? Would you still make those calls? Would you still knock on people's doors? The answer is always yes. So it's, it's, it's really important, I think, to have another place in your life that you haven't seen the light, but you've still gone forward and just be able to capture that in your mind and to be able to easily connect that with what you're doing today, I think is, is really important. Yeah, and I'm gonna tie a couple of things that Justin really brought out. Like part of what I talk about environment matters, there's so many layers to that, is being around, that's why it's talent, attracts talent, environment matters. They're very much designed to go, go with each other. Right? When you're around other really talented people, then hopefully you see the possibility. Right, You say, hey, I'm every bit as capable as they are. Now it's a matter of me actually doing what they're doing or in my own unique way. So that's part of it is actually believing you can do it. Right, He talked about what's the definition of motivation. Right, It's ex expectancy, which is like agency. Like You believe you can do it. Do you expect that you can do it or not? Because if you don't think you can do it, you're not going to do it. I promise you. But if you believe you have the possibility of achieving something, then it totally changes the equation. Times that value, right, which is like your skill set, your purpose, divided by impulsivity and your willingness to just like, you're, you're not really committed and delay procrastination, right? So it starts with the belief that you have the capability to do it. And that ties right into a growth mindset, understanding that effort trumps talent all day, right? Um, so, it, but if you don't believe that, and a lot of people honestly just don't believe that at least yet. So honestly, they're already, they failed from day one. If you don't believe you can do it, you will not do it. I promise you something extraordinary. You, you won't start it. Yeah. You won't even guys, start it. And even unless if you, you got just the yeah. time you say, I know I believe in you. Yeah. And I'm serious. Yeah. Like, and just someone that is there mentoring you to get you into action. If yep. you have your own motivation, you gotta run. Yeah. It's nice to have someone showing you some rails and some pathways and some long or shortcuts. Yep. Success leaves clues, right? Right. Model proven success. Don't reinvent the wheel, which is the like the whole like ethos and and of, of this company in general. I mean, Gary Keller wrote the red book. He wrote about studying the top agents throughout the nation and documenting their best practices so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like that's just that's if you want to do anything extraordinary, go find someone that's done something in that in, in that you know vocation extraordinary and try to go model them, right? And the more transparent they're willing to be, the more effective that modeling will be, right? That's part of again, environment matters. Be around really successful people, but make sure they're people that are actually willing to share with you what they're doing. You can learn through observation, but you'll learn far more when they're willing to open the books to you and really genuinely care and share. And that's what I'm extremely purposeful about trying to create here.
Like that's what differentiates this office more than anything is that, right? A willingness to share and collaborate, right? That's why I'm a, just a big believer in it. There's plenty to go around for everyone. But again, I come back to like, you got to believe you can do it. Go ahead, Robert. I was just relating to new agents in my head. And the challenge with new agents is just simply we see 10 shiny objects from 10 very competent different people or companies. And we're running 10 different ways. And we're so thinly spread that nothing becomes successful with a coach or mentor. Our insight and then like Keller Williams wishes is only two or three really big lead generation areas. The rest of them are overstated. So if you focus on those two or three core ones, you have to be successful. You just have to be successful. Yep. And, and stop at number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just stop, 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 stop. Stop looking at it. Stop wasting your time. Focus on the big core. Yep. That, that's either. And you know, it starts like if you're, if you're committed and clear on that purpose, you'll find the plan, right? It all starts there. And that, that purpose drives the, the consistency. I wrote those down. Consistency, commitment, clarity, and accountability. Like those are the things that come from that. And those are the things that drive us to be extraordinary. And we all have that capability. We all do. It's purely a choice. And it always comes back to personal responsibility. And no one said it was going to be easy, right? That, that's the other piece. Like what he said, like he said, you know, when you do when you overcome, I talk about it all the time, when you overcome challenges and you embrace the difficulties and you embrace the challenges, they are where the greatest opportunity is to learn and grow and evolve. And they're the most gratifying thing you can do, right? So again, when you have that mindset and you create that habit, you lean into the challenges, you step out of that comfort zone and that's what accelerates your growth and your achievement. Happiness is progress, pure and simple. Like, right, when you feel like you're, you said it, just getting before everyone came here, Bobby, and it was spot on. I just want to get a little bit better every day. That's it. That's what makes us happy. If we can look ourselves and sit in bed at night and whatever and say, did I get a little bit better? Did I improve? That is how we're happy. And when we don't feel that way, that's when we are not happy. Don't overcomplicate it. It's real simple. And run your own race. Right. Again, watch others, model others, but put it in the context of your own race, your own evolution, because that can also be a very slippery slope when you start to see things and you start to compare yourself too much. And that can be demoralizing. And often, quite frankly, what you're seeing is not the full story either. Right. So really, really important concept. And it always comes back to habits and clarity of purpose to me. What, what else, guys? Sorry, I'm doing too much talking. Josh, I wanted to start with the quote that um, Muhammad Ali has that he says, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. And that, that connects exactly with what we are saying, just focusing and feeding, feeding uh, the, the results rather than focusing on feeding the methods. I think that's, uh, that's something I really loved about it, that um, knowing that you have to pay the price and uh, and everything you want to achieve in life requires commitment and sacrifices. And uh, I, I really related with that part of it. I love that, Nick. And my note too was like around agency and like uh, connecting yourself. He talked about connecting yourself to the future, right? About results, right? Envisioning the future. And when you connect yourself to your future self, then you are much more likely to be disciplined and delay gratification. That's such a big piece. That's what most people don't have that kind of discipline. They're like the here, like it's important to be in the here and the now, but also have, you know, future forethought into the future. I think being a great business owner is having foresight, right? Because you understand that what you do now has implications in the future, right? Be present in the moment in that action, but have a plan and, and a purpose that's way into the future. Because again, for that very reason and that delayed gratification, which is where most people fall way short. Like what's in it for me right now? What's in it for me right now? Do I see an instant return in this business? If they don't see like they're getting results right away, they're like gone. Well, you're kidding yourself because what you do now, you will not reap the benefits of for a month, two, three, couple of years, depending on what it is. Working in your business and on, yep. on your business. Yep. So big on the delayed gratification piece. And when you can connect yourself to your future self and believe that you can be there, you're far more likely to understand that delayed gratification piece. So that like, really connects with me, right? About kind of thinking about your future self, uh, even on like the flip side of it, not about adding habits, but it's kind of a throwaway comment at the end about you know, what's the negative habit in your life 
that you need to drop, right? What would have the biggest impact? And maybe, right? I know what my biggest negative habit is. And maybe I've kind of put off, you know, dropping that because I'm not connecting it up with my future self, right? When I'm looking at who I want to be in 10 years, does that person still have these negative habits? Probably not, right? And so it's like the more that I'm putting that off, the more I'm delaying this person that I could be, right? Well, it's like said, even me thinking about this, right? That's yeah. holding me back, you know? Yeah. I gotta just kind of, just gotta run with it. I love it. And I appreciate well, this. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I well, think well, that's a good one too. Yeah. Well, just because you think you can do both sometimes. I'm sorry. Robert, you talked it three times already. Yeah. <laughs> no, you like, you, you think you can do both sometimes, right? Yeah. Like you think I can get away with these negative habits and still do the positive things and it just doesn't work that yeah. way. Like you have to well said it. Okay. A, 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 a real commitment to the positive things. Yeah. Or the negative will always overtake the positive. Yeah. It's never like you can't eat like trash, eat like shit and still get in shape. Like it just it just can't, it just won't happen, yeah. right? You have to fully commit to the the positive yeah. and to see it. And, and that's just so good, man. Like the future, your future self is, is so dependent on now, right? Mm -hmm. It's so like hungry that's on like, if you change now, you know, years from now, it won't even matter. I love like that statement. Your future heart, self is so dependent it's like, on it's now. Like <laughs> that's that's for like you to yep. change. Yeah. So that you can reap all the beautiful benefits that life has to offer. So yeah. that, that, that's, that's the one that I love is once your goals are defined, your purpose is defined, Habits equals your future. And if you can stay consistent, rain, sleet, snow, hell, right? Like you will get what you want. Yeah. Period. Love it. Well yeah. said, folks and guys. Who else? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, sir. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just wanted to add a little a little bit more to that. Um, he mentioned uh the common denominator was doing things that most people won't do. So, you know talking about the habits, creating good habits and letting go of the bad habits. This is something that we have to continue to work on because we end up, I feel for myself, like I can end up getting into a bad habit where I'll start watching a little bit more TV than I should be. And, and that to me, it gets to me like, okay, I need to be more, uh, I need to start reading more. I need to work out more. I need to start coming up with brainstorming for other things to do, you know? And, and, acknowledging that you're having or creating bad habits is very important uh, so that you can continue to grow as a person. Yep. Self-awareness. And it, it, it's something we all can work on. It takes practice, you know, pure and simple. It takes practice. And that's a great, that's a great point, Kristen. Spot on, man. Who else? Good to see you, Blake. I haven't seen you in a long time, man. <laughs> I know. Good to see you too. I'm back. <laughs> Love it. Who else wants to share some thoughts, whether it's on Zoom or out here? Come on. Uh, I'll just share one thing. I think um, talking about habits and stuff, uh, obviously determine the future, but I think it's, if you know, if you miss a day, it's hopping right back on the wheel the next day. Um, sometimes, you know, like, you know, if you hit the gym for a week hard and then you take, you know, a day off and then, you know, next thing you know, it's two days and it's three days. It's like, you know, having that one bad day and then hopping right back on uh, your routine uh, and not kind of dwelling and being, ah, okay, next Monday or whatever. It's kind of getting right back on it the next day. Yep. And I'll be frank with you, the, the balance, I wrestle with this a lot because I am so like, and he, he used the word standards, which I'm such a big, like non-negotiable standards. And if I ever miss a day of like working out, which is very, very, very rare, I'm always balancing like, you know, I don't want to miss a day ever because I always feel like that day can turn into two can turn. And I just don't even want to take that chance for me a little bit sometimes, as long as it's not being selfish to someone else. So that's where I balance it. Like if it's for family or something that's just extraneous and it's going to impact other people, then I'm willing to perhaps miss that one once a year day, quite frankly. Um, and that's literally what it is for me, but it, but it comes back to like self-awareness and, 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 if you're going to step out of a good habit, be honest with yourself. It better be for a damn good reason, which can be the case, you know? Um, but, but if not, then you're just giving yourself an excuse. Mm -hmm. That's how I view it, you know, cause I wrestle with that periodically with certain things. And, and um, when I am like contemplating, you know, I went like just an example, like I went out to the desert on Saturday, left extremely early, didn't work out at the normal time. I'm like, I am committed. I will work out when I get home. Turns out I didn't get home till like some crazy time too. And I'm like debating that, you know, and I, I did it. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, whatever time I, I did, you know, so that that's, you know, but I wrestle with that. Is it going to interfere with like 
my family and this and that. It turned out it wasn't too bad, but that's like, that's the kind of thing that like happens once in a while for me. And I'm very conscientious and I, uh, of, of, of processing that and, and making hopefully what I think is a, is a good decision, not an easy decision, but the right decision, right? Who else guys? I think uh, <clears throat> sometimes this idea of future self can actually be an inhibitor because you can put it off as being, this is my 10 year thing, or this is my five year thing, mm -hmm. which automatically gives you more leeway to be a bit, a bit lax with your daily process. Mm -hmm. And what I like to tell myself is that what, what can actually happen in the future is much bigger and greater than I can even imagine today. And the only difference between me and what I see in my future is my mind, how I think. That's really the only difference, right? Because my actions are gonna follow how I think and how I process things. So if I have a good vision of what that future self is, don't put it in the future, put it into today, into today right? So I think somebody mentioned the, the gentleman who left, you know, is this habit something that I'd be doing in 10 years? Maybe, maybe it's not. It's like, to me, that may be cringe a little bit. It's like, if you're saying maybe, right? Like, you know it is, or you know it's not. So if it's not, it's not nah. today, yeah. <laughs> right? Because that means that that future self that you imagine today, yeah. right, is actually nowhere close to being where you can be when you yeah. actually hit those yeah. five, 10 year mark. So. Yeah, I love that, Stephen. That's freaking spot on. I wish Blake heard that. Um, but it, it always comes back to like me, it's like tomorrow is not promised, urgency now, right? I mean, that that's how I also like live my life. I, I, and as you get older, as we all get older, because we all do, you'll start to recognize that, you know, <laughs> that I do certainly, more and more urgency, you know, because, uh, you know, I think I'm 50 years old. I mean, even the sounds like unbelievable to me sometimes, you know? Um, and uh, I don't mean, I don't feel that any different than I was when I was 20, quite frankly, but that's 30 years ago. I mean, that's crazy to even think that way. And so how do I make the most of today? Because tomorrow is not promised. So create that urgency now. And I love that. Don't give your, and, and I always come back to like buy one date. If you don't have a buy one date on a goal or a purpose, it's meaningless because there's no accountability. There's no ability to measure right? What you're doing. So have that buy one day and have that urgency. I, I love that because it does, it can give you a very big excuse. Oh, I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll wait till tomorrow. It's my, my future self way, you know, so it's balancing that as you guys can see, it's often balancing what seemed to be, you know, um, what, what's the word contradictory, maybe not, you know, concepts. And that that's, that's the key, right? Putting them all into context and balancing them all. Well, the bridge between them is you, Block out monthly, weekly, daily what you have to do yeah. to get to that year goal, that three year goal, that five yes. year goal. And of course, what happens in all the studies, and we, we know this, within a year, most of us overestimate what we can achieve. And in five years, we grossly underestimate what well, we can achieve. Yeah. Because the studies say in five years, with a plan and then chucking it down, anything is possible. Yeah. And in one year, we just tend to overestimate. So if we back down our one year a little bit and we increase our five year, we're going to be great. Yeah. And focus on the process and have a process, have a plan, have a plan and embrace the process, right? Which are the actions and the activities that you can control. And if you execute on them with your best effort, with consistency, every single day, you will inevitably grow and achieve great things. There's a great book called The 12-Week Year. I don't know if some of you have read yep. it. That talks specifically about this, about having to, uh, uh, being able to avoid being fearful of the unknown years and years. You, for what you were saying, you should check it out. I mean, you'll really appreciate it. But it, it breaks your year down in 12 weeks. Things become quantifiable, it creates urgency, and it gives you a clear path to kind of capture today rather than saying, okay, I'll get to that some other time or some other moment. Yep. Love it. Yeah. George. Yes. Hi. Hey. I was just going to say, like, I like, um, it's really important to, um, it reminded me this, this topic about rhythm and find your own rhythm uh, within your business. Don't, don't, don't stretch out too much, just find your own pace. Because then um, if you if you don't know how to find your rhythm, you're never gonna get anywhere. So even if it's not like, you know, I'm not like, I'm like a morning person, right? And I go to late, later, at, uh, I go to bed later at night, but I, I, I stop throughout the day and I keep going and I stop and I keep going, you know? But certain people, they just wanna work nine to five, which is fine. 
but just find your own rhythm because once you find it, then you'll be able to, to achieve more. Agreed, because it is like, I, I always use, I'm a big believer of sustainability, right? Anyone can run, jump out of the gate, get excited, blah, 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 and it just all of a sudden sizzles out. So whatever your plan is, make sure it's sustainable for you. And what's sustainable for you is not necessarily what's sustainable for someone else, right? And that will change for you as well, but we all have our own unique strengths and weaknesses. So that level of self-awareness where you leverage your strengths and hopefully delegate and earn the right to delegate your weaknesses is, is critical. So I love what you said, George, because yeah, you gotta pace yourself. You gotta, otherwise, if it's not sustainable, it's not gonna, it's not effective. And that's like, again, I, I use that example even for myself. Like, I don't prescribe how I eat, how I work out to most other people. It's pretty like radical. I mean, I'm radical. It's pretty over the, but for me, it's been sustained. I have proven that, you know, I've done this for, for, for years and years and years consistently. But quite frankly, I don't think most other people can and will, you know, so don't, don't even try if it's not sustainable. So understand what that looks like for you and run your own race with consistency. Any other uh, thoughts on any of these things, guys? Hi, Josh. This is Sissy. I just um, wanted to add something um, just on a personal note. I think um, for me, I'm involved in a lot of things that have a bigger purpose than just myself, and I find the purpose to lead me. However, I also find it a challenge because that means that there's a lot of noise around me and there is a lot of input from other people and other uh, perspectives and so on that impact my purpose. And um, sometimes I find it extremely challenging to stay focused on path and on path with my purpose and my vision for what I want to do. And so, so, you know, at the end of it all, you have to constantly, I'm finding that I have to constantly reassess, well, is, am I still on the same path? And is this true to my purpose? And um, sometimes you have to make those hard decisions because there, it, it's like crowd uh, you know, crowd noise and you, you're you sort of swimming with the stream, but you have to step out of it. And it takes a lot of strength and, you know, and it's not easy to step out of that and, you know, clear your head of the noise and just worry about staying on your path if it is a good purpose, you know. And um, that's something that I constantly struggle with. And at the end of it, when I do step out, sometimes I look at it and I say, gosh, was that really worth it? On the negative side of things, I wasted a lot of time, you know, figuring this out. But on the positive side of things, that time was um, education that I needed that will take me to the next level and to another place. It was experience that I needed. Unfortunately, I wasted the time that I could have spent on doing this productively, but on the flip side, I have to look at it as um, those painful situations were necessary for growth. And both growth and achievement are not linear. They're peaks and valleys. I would argue it was wasted. It's, it's a lesson learned and mistakes are how we learn and, and, and in going off course can often be great value, um, even though we may not see them in the moment. I think it's also a couple of things you said, so many of the things you said had a lot of power. First of all, have other people in your world that you can consult with that you trust, coaches, peers, you know, whatever, because we all have blind spots. I don't care who you are uh, and a, a great coach, a great peer, whatever will help you with that. And they often confirm something that you may know, but don't have quite the conviction to act on. So oftentimes a great coach will just confirm something you already know, but give you that much more confidence to actually apply it. I think that's, that's gigantic. And, um, and yeah, we all have to reassess. If you're not questioning yourself periodically, I think you're missing the whole point. I mean, if you're not remaining open-minded, 
you know, it's again, a balance between being extremely focused and, and whatever, and also at the same time, being open-minded to the world and circumstances change. And if you're just so have such blinders on and you're not open and receptive to that, you're going to miss some great opportunities to learn and grow and evolve. I mean, and, and it's really important to sort of balance them all. And also what you said, you're never going to please everyone, period, end of conversation. And the more responsibility and the more, you know, skilled you become in something, that becomes more and more challenging. So don't try, right? You can do it tactfully. You can do it professionally. You should do it, you know, with compassion and kindness. But at the end of the day, you're never going to please everyone, nor should you even try. It's, it is coming back to running your own race. No one's going to define your purpose other than you, sissy. You know what I mean? It's your life. And you got to take responsibility for that. And within that, try to become the best person you can become and find your right path. So I love all the things you just said, and, and you're not the only one, believe me, that that feels that way in many different ways. But it is balancing all of these things to me is how you find the right path and purpose for, for yourself. Thank you. Can I add one more thing? Um, yep. I asked, um, so uh, talking about connecting your future self and seeing, envisioning yourself and getting there. Well, um, I am sure that everyone's heard of this really, uh, that book um, by Franklin Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of the things that always stands out to me, me personally, there's so all seven uh, habits are important, but one that um, stands out is start thinking with the end in mind. I may have misquoted that, but you know, but basically what it's telling you is to start thinking about what you, where you want to go and that'll guide you and you'll have a path that you're taking rather than just going off course and just, you know, haphazardly going one way or other. So if you want to get to, you know, the McDonald's on the corner of so-and-so, you're not just going to be driving around all over the place, right? You're going to be, you know, exactly where you need to go and what you, you know, what streets you need to tech and take while there are so many, so in that sense, it sort of also supports, um, you know, connecting your self now with your future self and your future goals. For me, I just translate that very simply, like have a plan, right? Um, yeah. And have, you know, have, right, have smart goals, specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, time bound by when, which we talked about earlier, and then have a plan. If you, you can have a great goal and a great purpose. If you don't have a plan, you're going to get lost, guys. That's like the GPS, right? We talk about it within Keller Williams. It's like if you had a destination, but you didn't have the GPS, you had no plan, you may have a lot of difficult time getting there, right? So have a plan, right? And, and that's critical. And if you don't have a plan, ask for help, right? Asking for help is a sign of strength. We all need help at times, believe me. No one's immune to that. And have the humility to, to understand that. The last point, thank you, Sissy, again. I just want to say, like, and, and you know, Batia said some great things before we got started. Um, he said, resolve to create a new world, right? Um, and I wrote a couple notes, like, I, I, again, I'm a fundamental believer in this. The best can always become better. So no matter where you are, there's always room to improve. No matter where, you, and, and whoever said Muhammad Ali, I forget, I think it was Nick. You know, no matter where you are, and that documentary is awesome, by the way, um, on PBS, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no matter where you are, you can always become better. And a lot of people um, sometimes don't get that. They get some success and then they think they're cool and they're, the ego sets in and they become complacent and they, you know, they think they know it all. And they, so that to me is something I watch very, very carefully. How do people handle, quote unquote, success or achievement? Um, and then, you know, I, I say it all the time and it goes hand in hand, perpetually raise the bar. Again, no matter where you are, are you always striving to take it to the next level, right? And that's a mentality, that's an underdog mentality, like a Tom Brady, like him or not. I mean, I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, he is just never satisfied, you know, I, I don't, cause that's a careful thing too, but he's always striving to become better. You look at the, the top performers, what's music, you know, business, sports, they have that humility. They take nothing for granted. They don't become complacent. They're always just trying to raise the bar. And I love that mentality. And life is short. And that's the legacy you lead. You lead by example. Yes, Solana. Maybe I was, uh, again, I agree with you. Um, me personally, I used to play tennis professional. And I was in top, uh, top 10 in my country. And of course, I would uh, agree one more time. It's very important to have discipline. Again, you should play with the good players. So like that, you learn. So it's like your mentor and 
And uh, of course, mentally, that was really important for us to be strong mentally. We even have some kind of like process. And we have like strategy, it's like in chess, the way you play, you have a plan. So this is very important also in tennis. And if you want to compete, if you want to win, like you should play every day. Of course, you're going to have good days and bad days, but that one day you will succeed as like I did. So I really believe in the whole concept. Of course, one day you will, you will be like really successful, but you have to follow everything. Yeah, um, you should really have good habits. And of course, everybody has bad ones, but you should like work on these things. Love it. Love it. There are no shortcuts. The shortcut is being disciplined and consistent. Period. Yeah. And there's also this misconception that successful people wake up motivated. Yeah. It's like you don't always want to do it, but every day you do, just like she was saying, you yeah. want to like get a good air practice, go be at one of the other. Yeah. 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 Love it. All right, guys. Great, great conversation. We're going to move to metrics. Thank you all. Um, we could go on and we'll continue on Wednesday too. So, uh, and before we go into metrics here, um, don't forget tomorrow, we're having a great, great class being led by two of our top agents on listing uh, lead generation for listings, but specifically around branding and social media. So Rod and Nikki are going to lead that um, tomorrow at 3 p.m. here. So hope to have everyone here. It'll also be on Zoom, but hopefully the more people we get in person, I just think it changes the complexion of, of the interaction. So stay tuned for that. Hope to see everyone. All right. So now for those that are new, we're measuring the activities. How many people are we proactively reaching out to? Of those people, how many people did we actually communicate with? And then lastly, how many appointments did we schedule from that? So this is since last Monday. Robert, you're up. 15, 13, 3. 15, 13, 3. Awesome. Nick, you're up. I'm at 39, 27, you're 2. 39, 27, and 2. Sorry, you broke up on us. Sounds yeah, that way. That's right. Okay. Um, Janet, you're up. That's right. 31, 28, and 3. 39, 28, and 2 for Janet. 31. Th sorry. 31. 31. 28, and 2. 31, 28, and 2. Awesome. The first, the first of many, I know. Oh. Kevin Mitchell, you're up. Hey, brother. Um, let's see. I did like 330 calls last week. Um, let's see. I think I have two appointments upcoming this week, working on a new escrow, and going to add some more. Love it. Massive action, brother. And I'll see you soon. Christian, you're up. 65, 16, and 2. Great work, man. Blake, do you have numbers for us or? Not yet. I'll get started on that this week. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Um, Matthew, you're up. Uh, I don't I don't really have numbers. I'll have to start sort of this week going forward. Start. Do. All right. Good work, man. Happy to have you here. Pinar, you're up. Hi, everyone. Um, I have 10 actual contacts and two appointments this, this week. Great work, Pinar. Destiny. 75 calls, seven contacts, and no appointments. 75, I'm sorry, I missed the second number. Seven. Okay. Great work, Destiny. All right. Um, Angeli, do you have numbers for us? Angeli? All right, we'll come back. Hilda and Erica. All right, we'll come back there. Um, Cindy, you're up. Happy Monday, everybody. 15 there. and five, and then I had three appointments. So those are three buyers. Awesome, great work, Cindy. Thank you. Hazmik, do you have numbers for us? Yes, good morning. 13, morning. five, and two appointments. Great work, Hasmic. Love it. Thank you. Jennifer N., I know you're uh, relatively new to this. Do you have numbers for us? Yeah, hi. I don't have any numbers. I'm still just getting started. 
Good stuff. Um, George, did I get you? I don't think so. No, uh, probably like 40 people. I was on a TV show Saturday called House Hunters for my listing that is put in escrow. And uh, yeah, I have things going on. Oh, I have Wait, a new uh, rental in Miracle Mile if anyone is looking. Um, it's a four bedroom, three bad. Beautiful home. So 65. George, make it happen. John Thanks. Farron. Good morning, everybody. I had 32 calls and nine conversation. I have one school going and one appointment. Great work, John. Okay. Get it happen. All right. Uh, Amber. I have 18, 18, and one appointment this afternoon, actually. 18, 18, and one for Amber. A lot, I'm guessing, were you still waiting on your license? You're not, uh, Serena's still waiting on her license. I LJ. do have an appointment coming, okay. coming this week. So okay. Buyer. So add LJ to this and he'll start giving us numbers. Yeah. LJ, who else did I miss that's on Zoom that has numbers? Anyone I missed that has numbers? All right, we're wrapping it up with affirmations. Let's do it. I prosper wherever I turn because I enjoy living an abundant lifestyle. I prosper I wherever I turn and I enjoy I living an abundant I lifestyle. I'm in control of my destiny and I choose to succeed. I'm in control of my I'm destiny, of my destiny, 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 destiny. destiny and I choose to succeed. I choose love, joy, and freedom. I choose, I choose love, love, joy, and freedom. Joy and freedom. I earn $100,000 a month selling real estate. I earn $100,000 a month selling real estate. I close 107 deals a year. I close 107 deals a year. I have 13 saleable listings. I have 13 saleable listings. I am brave and fearless. I am brave and fearless. I embrace fear and let it propel my growth. I embrace fear and let it propel my growth. I deserve to be happy, healthy, and wealthy. I deserve to be happy, healthy, and wealthy. I have many reasons to be grateful. I have many I reasons, have many reasons to, be to be grateful. I have a growth mindset. I have a growth mindset. I embrace the process. I embrace the process. I'm a powerful real estate professional. I'm a powerful I'm a real estate professional. professional. I'm a business owner. I'm a successful I'm a business, business owner. owner. I believe in myself and so do others. I believe in I believe myself. In myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I am decisive. I am decisive. I'm decisive. I am healthy and fit. I am healthy, I'm and, healthy fit. and fit. I am intelligent and kind. I'm intelligent, I'm intelligent and, kind. and kind. I project an image of power and confidence. I project an image of power and confidence. I ask for help when I need it. I ask yeah, for help when I need it. Asking for help is a sign of strength. Asking for help is a sign of strength. None of us is as smart as all of us. None of us is as smart as all of us. I help others become successful. I help others become successful. Together, we all accomplish more. Together, we all accomplish more. I am a top producer. I am a top producer. I am a leader. I am a leader. Talent attracts talent. Talent attracts talent. Environment matters. Environment, Environment matters. matters. Good day, great week. Hope to see everyone tomorrow. Take care. Thanks, Bye, Tom. everybody. Thank you for today. It was awesome. All right. Good stuff. Good contribution, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. You too, Amber. Thank you. See you, bro. Yeah. Get this picture. Just send you a okay. message of all my stuff. Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, do you mean Stephen? Yeah, you see Yeah, I'm still waiting on the lights. Yeah, okay, okay. And you've been plugging in with Mercedes. Okay, awesome, cool. All right, let's get into the Zoom stuff. I want to do like four out of three. I can't do that Thank 
I'll stand on the back. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Let's get this picture real quick. Yeah. Okay. That. Um, How was the weekend, dude? <laughs> great. Good. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We went to it's a polo match over the Palisades. Okay. Awesome. Just you and your wife. I'm trying yeah, to remember. Just, just okay, that's what I thought. I saw some pictures. Yeah. It, it, oh, oh, I've never. It's funny, I've never been to a pool. <laughs> 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 and it was cold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome.
Thank you. 